Hi, my name is James Heron. I'm a member of the uh, Digital Asset Integration Team with Pentagon Solutions, and this is a short video on using Kobe Exports in Power BI. Um, what I wanted to go through today was a very quick overview of how we can use Power BI to sort of visualize the relationships between sheets in Kobe. So this is taken from the uh, BS Lena YouTube Part Four. Uh, standard and it's just to try to help visualize the relationship between the different sheets that already exist inside the Kobe schema. The Kobe schema is there to help uh, deliver structured information and as such um, these relationships are key to, to maintaining those uh, outputs. So just to put this in the context, this is a visualization. This is a, a, a snapshot of a copy file, which we're going to use in a second. But what we have is um, just a way to look at a component sheet. We'll see we have a list of our individual assets um, listed out by, by, by name. But we can see there's a list of assets here that are all essentially the same object type. You can see in this column here, and this column is highlighted in orange, as is the space column. What that tells us is that this column relates to another column on another sheet. So in this case, if we look down in our type sheet, we'll see a ball valve 50 mil, and that entire row gives us all the information related to that particular object type. So we, we might have 20 individual components placed around the building, but we also put what, what we can do using the schema is consolidate that information down into one row so all the type information relates to the same 20 object or same group of object the same applies for spaces and zones and floors there are inherent relationships both within the uh Kobe schema so what we're going to do is jump into power bi and we're going to take that same file we're going to just pull it in from excel and the only files were the only sheets we're interested in just for this exercise we can expand this out but the component sheet the floors uh we'll go with the spaces the system the type and the zones so it's just six sheets and we'll see how we can quickly link those sheets together to reduce the visualization so if we're loaded in we'll just jump into our relationship view and we'll see all six now i think there's an issue with this particular sheet for some reason it hasn't put the headers at the top so we'll just go in to correct that transform the data and we'll see if we go to the system sheet our headers haven't been promoted so we'll just correct that reload that back into the uh sorry working view so we can see all the uh the headers listed there so what we're going to do is just just to help us understand this we're going to rearrange these um each of these tables to match what we'd seen uh in the schema so we've got our zones our floors and our spaces on the left hand side and we're going to group our components and our types and our systems on the left hand side so essentially what we want to do is link these all together so spaces are grouped by zone and they're also grouped by floor so if we go with the zone first create the space names and connect that to the names you can see it's a one-to-one -one relationship and then on the right hand side here we'll go with the uh, floor name and we'll connect that up to the name in the floor sheet See, that's also a one to one relationship. Over the right hand side here, we'll just repeat the same thing. So we've got our components and they are group type name to name in the type sheet. So we'll drag that up. That's a one to many relationship. So one type is applied to many components. And our component system is a one to many relationship as well. And lastly, what we'll do is we'll link our component sheet. So let's move these across for a second easier to see we'll link our component sheet 
our spaces. So space field links to the space name field. Again, one to many relationship. Okay, so once that's done, we can jump back and we're just going to create three quick visuals. The first one we'll do is we'll create a just a quick table. And what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to uh, add in information from different sheets. So we'll start with the um, the spaces. We'll bring in the space name. And then we'll bring in the space description. And then we'll bring in which floor those spaces are assigned to. And lastly, we want to figure out how many assets we have in each of those spaces. We'll just change that to account. Now we can see there's a blank row at the top, but we'll ignore that for now. But what we can see at a glance now is how many assets there are per room. Second visual here, what we'll do is we'll create a, um, a chart. And what we'll do is we'll bring in information related to the object types. So let's bring in the type name. What we want to do is we want to count how many assets we have by type. So bring it up to the value. So we can see very quickly there, organized from largest to smallest, our object, our, our, our types of objects. And what we want to do is maybe visualize that based on the, the warranty period per type. So we'll color those up. And the third one we're going to do is, uh, is a bit of a spatial analysis. So we want to look at the overall floor area in a sort of a heat map region. And we want to group those areas by category. So, sorry, wrong one. I'm going to go back and just correct that. Correct that in a second. What we'll do is bring in the space category. So we can see. We'll group those by the floor. We'll just maybe go back and correct that category. So what we want to do is bring in the description instead. So we can look at the room areas by description. Lastly, what we'll do is just to make this a lot easier to handle, we'll bring in a filter. What we'll do is we'll use the the, the asset category. So we'll bring that in from the uh, type sheet we drop that in so we'll see all of our we'll just change that to a drop down what we have is all of our objects by category so in this case we'll maybe zero in on something like uh, windows so I'll just filter all the all the visuals by well, let's start with downlights so we can see all the, the downlights by type and it'll give us a count of how many assets there are per room. Again, we can filter further, show how many light fittings by type there are. Broken down into other rooms so of 24 overall. And if we want to see where all of our light fixture B3s are, we can click on that, and that'll give us a breakdown. It's 95 in total. You can see that on the left hand side. So if there's something that needs to be replaced, we can quickly identify where all those assets are. We want to see all the assets by by the room type, room area. We can click on something like pathology and then tell us what light fixtures are related to that particular space. So because the relationships are there, we can now um, do some useful things in Power BI. And once we've connected the data together, I mean we we've only connected six sheets, we can connect more. Um, but that essentially gives you an idea then of what's happening once we, we bring in structured data into um, something like a, an asset management system. So hopefully that's been informative. Um, thanks for watching. If you want to get more information, uh, just click and subscribe. And um, if you want more information, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn.